Welcome to Waitsburg Christian Church. I'm Pastor Matt. Um, we are continuing our journey through day two. So you may be asking, why is this continuing? Why is this day two? It, we're going as, as far as God leads us through this. Um, day two, as we read the, the first sermon, the scripture, day two was the day after Christ was crucified. Everything was new to these disciples. Everything was scary, fearful. Uh, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what was going to hit them. For three and a half years, they're walking with their best friend, seeing all the miracles, and then he's gone. And so they were forced into this new way of living, this, this new life. They were hiding behind closed doors. And I feel in 2020, it has felt so much like that, where, God, where are you? We get those questions. God, if, if you're really who you are, why do we have to live like this? And I, wanna, I want God to teach us lessons throughout this sermon series of how do we need to respond with day two? Um, I, I want to speak on the subject today of I'm on edge. I have, first of all, I want to thank you for those who are joining us, those who are new, those who have been with us for a long time, um, those who are joining us literally from all around the world. Thank you for taking your time with us. You'll find out if you don't know me, I'm a Jesus guy. Jesus seeps into every area of my life. The same goofy guy you see on Sundays is the same guy that you see uh, Monday through Saturday. But he means everything to me. Th that's who I am. And um, I'm on edge. You know, this, this week, this month, this year, you may say that where you may say, man, I feel like I'm on edge all the time. I've been saying that a lot this week. And Luckily, my wife and I are, are getting away for a little bit. Thursday, we're going to my niece's wedding. Unfortunately, you'll still have me as, as your pastor speaking in front of you next Sunday. I'll be speaking from a hotel room, but I'll still be with you. Um, but this, honestly, this uh, sermon was um, brought on by some things that happened yesterday. So it's funny because I was so on edge. Uh, we we're driving home from... from uh, Walla Walla, and I looked at my wife and said, hey, do you want to take over tomorrow? And you know how much she loves public speaking. She doesn't at all. But uh, she said, yeah, I'll just give a short one. God is great. Sin is good. And I, I stared at her. I said, what did, what did you just say? She said, oh, I mean, sin is bad. I mean, sin is bad. So we're, we're going to hold off on bringing Crystal up here until we understand that sin is, sin is bad. No, but I love my wife. She's uh She's a very uh, spiritual, faithful person, um, way better than I am. One of these days, she's going to be here, and she's going she's gonna to knock your socks off by the things that she says. She is a, a fantastic preacher in her own right, and the um, reason why I'm here today. But I'm on edge. You know, I, I look at 2020, and there's an outcry for healing. There's an outcry for justice. There's, it, this is a tense time, a difficult time. But what I love is that we're still growing. We're still moving. We, we stand in solidarity with every person in this country. I want to come across, first and foremost, you may already know that about me, but your life is of infinite value to God, not just in this country, but all around the world. That's, that's who we are. That's the message of the gospel, and that's something that we are so passionate about. But this week, I was uh, listening to it. I'm a big NBA guy, big MLB, NFL guy. Um, but this week I was listening to an interview by Doc Rivers. He's an African-American coach for the L.A. Clippers. And he broke down in tears and, and he said, we keep loving this country, but this country doesn't love us back. And you may agree, you may disagree with that statement, but I want you to put yourself in that pain. That there, Do you feel the pain in that? I, I heard that and I was moved to tears. And then you have these athletes who are willing to put up on the put on the table their reputation, the financial um, loss that they were willing to do for these peaceful protests, and people still give them grief about doing that. First it was, you can't be violent, we'll listen to a peaceful protest. Then these, these gentlemen, all across the sports world, just said, we're not going to play today. And there's some outcry. I want you to know that I'm standing with you. you know, your life has value to me. But I'm on edge. If you feel this way, if you feel anxious, if you feel depressed, not knowing what to do or how to... Whoa! <laughs> Hold on a minute. That scared me. Push pause. We had a little issue with the window. All right. 
We're back. I think I think my wife jumping scared me more than anything else. So hey, we're live. People have asked me why I don't just film it and then put it. No, I want no net. This is this is. A, all right, Lord, help me get back in mindset. Amen. Um, are you on edge? <laughs> that was perfect timing. Just a little bit on edge, but. If you're feeling this way, if you're feeling anxious like we are now, if you're feeling depressed, not knowing what to do or or even how to do life anymore, this message is for you. <laughs> let's go to let's go to scripture. God, calm my heart. It says uh, in Ephesians six. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Listen to the, this wording. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. How awesome is that? It said, stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. But here's the uh, highlighted verse that we're going to sit on today. It says, put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand combat... Underline this, your hand-to-hand combat is not against other human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, here it is, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you are protected as you confront the slander. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Our fight is not with each other. It's spiritual. I'll explain. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for uh, just your sense of humor. Thank you for your love for us. We thank you for every every, uh, human being watching right now, Lord, and that will watch throughout this week and in coming weeks. We ask that you bless this time together, Lord. We ask that you... uh, Bring peace and healing to this country, this world. Lord, I ask that you be present in every home, every car, every coffee shop where this is being broadcast. We just love who you are, Lord. And we're just grateful that we get a front row seat to your power. And to hear you say that we will rise victorious. That is what we need in 2020. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm not sure about you, but... Do you, do you ever get tired of arguing with people? Some of you may love it. But lately, there are times where I've been saying, I don't want to hear it. Now, it could be my wife who, who needs to vent. And I have to realize I can't say that right away. But in my mind, I'm like, I, I just can't. Like people who are reaching out and they're, they're talking about other people or fights we have on social media. Um, it could be as simple lately with me as who's the best basketball player. It's Michael Jordan, by the way, fight me. But it said when... Crystal got home yesterday. I realized that um, all of all of this anxiousness and uh, just the irritability that I was feeling all came to a head. So she she actually ran an errand that I needed her to do because we had a lot going on in the house and she had to go pick up a check and pay a tree guy. Um, but everything started to hit me at once. We had to figure out where to put the wood for the tree. We had someone out front of our house working. We had a dog, we have a new puppy that was outside and all, all he wanted to do was eat steak. So I put him inside and he went to the bathroom inside. But these, I realized that um, I was so on edge. And these vehement debates that, that we get into over little things, church, honestly, I feel like I'm done. Where I, I don't have the bandwidth, I don't have the emotional capacity right now to deal with agitated, irritable conversations. As a counselor, as an advocate, as a pastor, a coach, an advisor, th- there are times I have to look at everyone and say, I'm time out, time out, I'm done, I can't do it right now. But yesterday, Crystal came home and she's like, what's wrong with you? And it just all came out. It was like, I have this, 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 this going on. And her eyes get big. And I realized she has this look that she gives me, where she kind of just backs up and says, okay, you do your own thing. And uh, it's almost like she was walking on eggshells, but she's going to leave because I'm, I'm being a jerk. And I started laughing to myself because I realized that I am so edgy right now. 
I was with the Kefols last night and I told them, I said, man, I feel like I'm so on edge. And then I look at it and, and, and you could say an edge in life can be a good thing. It can keep you focused. It can keep you motivated, leaned in where you're all in this competitive edge. That's a good thing. When I say edge, what I'm talking about are there's so many frustrating, agitating things going in and around this world, in us and through us, that now we're irritable. Now we're explosive. And any little molehill can turn into a mountain quickly. And what do we do? We project. I project. And all of a sudden, what we're fighting about with a person isn't what we were talking about in the first place. And you're fighting about fights that aren't even your fight. Fighting about this and that, and it persists. And you want to prove your view and prove your perspective. And then 45 minutes later, you're thinking, why am I fighting about this? This isn't what we even started talking about. Where we're irritable, we're passionate. And now, we, now I have to ask my wife to forgive me. Now, maybe that's my own uh, experience and not yours, but I'm edgy. I'm frustrated about the dumbest little things. What matter, when what really matters, when I dig deep onto, Matt, why are you so edgy right now? It's, what really matters is human life. And what, what really matters is that no more people die in this country or around the world. That's what really matters. People are dying because of injustice. People are dying because of a disease and pandemic. It's literally life and death. That is the daily state that we're faced with, church. The news, the outlets, the, the media, we're inundated all of the time with, with all of this information. So my guess is that you're edgy as well. You may say, hey, Pastor Matt, I'm great. Everything's peaceful. Uh, don't put that on me. Okay, maybe you've been edgy. Or maybe you feel like you could be edgy in the future. Point is, when we get irritated, when we get irritable, when we get agitated and frustrated, we actually end up fighting the wrong thing and fighting with the wrong people. We get, we get to fighting in the wrong way. Isn't it funny when we're, we're irritable, frustrated, agitated? We fight with people we love the most. I do a lot of marriage counseling. And... Um, it's usually the projection is towards those that we love the most, that we feel the most trust with, we feel the most safe with. And we end up taking it out on the ones we love the most. And we make these molehills into mountains. I'm on edge. Welcome to 2020, church. Now, I want to say this about Scripture. We're going to talk today about not being irritable or agitated, but... More than that, finding some incredible steps and processes to acquire within us that Jesus himself has created. Now, I'm not trying to eliminate your passion to fight. The Bible here doesn't say there isn't a fight. Ephesians 6 doesn't say there won't be fighting, just be at peace. But some of our culture wants to uh, promote a false peace where everyone just lays down the differences and and their pains and these grievous acts that have happened and the, the pain of the history of the United States of America and the church itself, and we just play pretend. It's not real. It's not real peace. A real peace, church, is, is with truth involved. I'm not trying to look the other way, pretending it's not there. You know, it's not that I don't want to deal with my own shortcomings and, and look away from what part that we have all played in injustice that seems to fill the country and where we are. There is a fight. But the Bible says fight the good fight, not the wrong fight. There is a fight. It's a good fight and the right fight. Ephesians 6 says it's not against human beings. In fact, church, our fight is for human beings, not against. When somebody says Black Lives Matter, you may instantly hear BlackLivesMatter.com, an organization that is politically anchored somewhere and has issues and an agenda that frankly in some cases aren't biblical and I cannot get behind. So maybe you hear Black Lives Matter and you may think that, oh, it's that political movement. What I hear is a lifestyle of love. What I hear is that there's a question in this country and maybe other countries that the lives of black men and women, boys and girls, don't matter as much as other lives. That, that church is worth fighting for. That's when we stand up and say, no, every single man, human, woman, child, uh, 
human being on this planet, specifically black human beings, matter just as much as any other human being on the planet. That, that's worth fighting for. Another fight that's worth fighting for is the preservation of life when it comes to this disease and pandemic. We can do everything we can do or know how to do, which is so hard right now, right? Because we get all this information, something brand new that is happening, and we can't really wrap our minds around it or know what to do. But what's worth fighting for is that we can try to save more lives and protect and preserve more human life. Another fight that I'm passionate about, preservation of human life when it comes to not only disease and panic, uh, pandemic of COVID or illness, but the pandemic of abortion. Taking human life and ripping it from a body at a higher rate than any other disease before the baby can even take its first breath. That's a fight worth fighting for. That's our passion. Fighting for human lives are worth fighting for. There is a fight. But I'm going to say this, and I want you to write it down. I'm going to say it twice. In the fight for human lives, we cannot fight other human lives. I'll say that again. In the fight for human life, we cannot, church, we cannot fight other human lives. It's self-defeating. It's what Dr. King says is, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. You may know that this week we had an incident at, in front of our house between the church uh, where someone came in the middle of the night and destroyed the blessing box that we stocked for the last two years. We have stocked, community is stocked with canned goods and food for those in need. Families are coming at a higher rate than ever before during this quarantine, during this pandemic. Somebody broke the door and took all of it and uh, scattered everything that was in there. And I have to admit, I wanted that justice. I wanted that hate. I wanted that, tell me who it is. And I was already on edge because we had a court hearing later that day where we had to confront some very bad people. But I get a phone call not even a half an hour later. And it's from a young man here in town. He says, tell me what's wrong with the box. I have supplies. I'm going to come right now and fix it. Within five minutes, he came. And within 20 minutes, that box was even better than before. And what happened after that throughout the day was, wasn't justice. It was mercy and grace because the town, car after car, filled that box so full that we now have in our house more supplies to go in once these supplies go out. We can't fight humans so we can fight for humans. We can't stand up, speak out, be bold, be strong, and be who's, who God's called us to be our fight, our hand-to-hand -hand combat, Paul says, it's not with human beings. It's spiritual. I want to I say this statement. I fully believe this. Is what's happening now in this nation and nations around the world, it's far more spiritual than we could ever imagine. Can I, can I tell you one of the revealing ways that you know Satan himself is at work, and this is a spiritual battle? The Bible says in, in Ephesians that we just read that, that Satan has two titles. Those two titles are accuser and slanderer. You will know that you're in a spiritual war when accusations and slander begin to take the forefront of the narrative and tone of what's happening. That's a sure way to know it's spiritual. The devil himself doesn't want this to work. The devil doesn't want any of this to work. Look, look at the accusations around us. Look at the slander that's going on around us, especially in, in election time, especially in COVID, all of these. We're living in a culture right now where accusations and slander are celebrated. I'm not saying we don't speak the truth, but we need to speak it in love. The Bible doesn't say to look away the other way when we see error, when we see injustice, when we see murder. Jesus didn't look the other way. He stepped right into the middle of it. There was this practical, literal justice that had to be played out in continents and governments and human lives that are clearly lined out in the Bible. But it is also very clear in the Bible that in the ways of Jesus, in effort to fight for human lives, we don't fight other lives. We fight spiritually. One, one of the great ways we, we can fight, church, and I, I'm, I beg you, I implore you as your pastors, 
not participate in slander and accusations. I see it all the time. Both of which, are, they're not anchored in truth. And that's the hardest thing to do sometimes, right? When you see an error and a wrong, and you want to slander and you want to accuse, we want to tear them down. We want to devalue their, their opinion, their beliefs. We want to demean them. We don't participate in them as a family and I hope as a church that we will understand we don't participate in them. We speak the truth, but here's the, here's the kicker. Pay attention. We speak the truth, but we only speak the truth when it is motivated in love. We don't just say, hey, I'm just being honest and then just ream them and, and drag them across the coals. No, we only speak the truth when it is motivated in love. That's the part that we're missing. We're missing the motivated in love. That, that's what's going to bring change and progress to our country, to our church, to, to the world. One, one of the ways we know this is spiritual is slander and accusations are swelling right now. It's at an all-time high. We will not participate in that. We will speak truth, but it will be in love to, to, as an effort to improve humanity. That's who we want to be. That's who we are. Another thing I think is important. We will have to rehearse in these days. We're going to have to remember whose we are and where we stand. We are righteous, church. If you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, it's a free gift. And, and if you haven't, I urge you today, let that be the day. But you are righteous. You stand righteous. The Bible says God sits in the heavens and he laughs at his enemy, all those that oppose his plan. I love that because God finds it humorous that people feel like they can stop his plan. They, they think that they can stop him through this COVID, through this 2020, through this day too, and keep him from what he's doing. No, he is in complete control. I want to remind you, God is the victory. God is the champion. We will win. We do win. I've read the end of this book. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is God. But I also believe God will bring healing to these nations. That our church, churches around the world, will continue to grow. People's lives will be transformed. Church, do you understand this? If you're a believer in Jesus, we win. In life, we win. In death, we win. Jesus is our winner and our champion. And all of our efforts for, uh, for true justice and all of our efforts for true equity true integration of the church, the church I'm talking now, not, not the country, not the world, the church, all of our efforts. When you feel down, when you feel detoured, when you feel like nothing's changing or nothing's working in this day too, I want to remind you that we have a captain. We have a savior. His name is Jesus. He is undefeated. He is undisputed. God all by himself. He doesn't need anyone else. He chooses us. He is big. He's powerful. He's sovereign. He has no needs. I want you to know this, that I want you to remember that he is in control. If that's all you take from today, remember God is in control. Here's where I'll end. You, you may feel edgy. You may feel, feel irritable. You have to remember not to fight other human lives. You have to remember that he's in control, that he's sovereign. But here's where I'll end. It says in Ephesians, that speaking in the context of, of warfare, of spiritual warfare, of fighting spiritually, it literally says, put on God's full armor, God's complete armor. Now, a lot of people may think that if I'm irritable, if I'm edgy, that we have to fight for peace, that we have to purposely just, you know, get to work. I want to remind you that when you're, when you're irritable and edgy, you fight the wrong people, right? You fight the ones you love. You fight the wrong way. It leads to more frustration. But it's, it's really important in this, this edginess that we find progress so that we fight the good fight. So I want to show you in the, in the most practical way in the last five minutes. And now you know me as your pastor. When I say five minutes, it could be ten minutes or it could be longer. I don't know. But I want to show you one of the most practical portraits and expressions on how you can reduce your irritation, your edginess, so you can fight the good fight. And not every day roll out of bed to fight those who don't look like you, live like you, love like you, vote like you. Everyone can do that. Anyone can do that. I want you to know, church, you are a spiritual person. 
You're forgiven by Jesus, and he has a plan for you, even in 2020, even in this day too. It says to put on the whole armor of God. A lot of people will take this passage, and I, I was one of these young pastors who, I take this passage, and you think you have to memorize the whole armor, where I have to put on the shield, I have to put on the, the belt of truth, the cloak of zeal, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the breastplate of righteousness, there may be another, I don't know. But I don't, I don't think it means to every day go through all of that and put it on. Okay? You may be surprised that I say this because you may have heard other sermons from other pastors that say every day you got to buckle down and you got to put all of this on, put on that helmet, get your sword out. I, I, the reason why I don't believe that it means every day go through it all and put it on is because if, look at the original translation. The original words put on in the original translation literally means sink into. Wow, that that is so good. Sink into. There's a provision that God has made for when we are in a fight. And we, church, don't, don't misunderstand that. We are in a fight right now. There are wicked, evil forces that it says in Ephesians. There are wicked, evil forces that want people to feel less than human to feel less than valuable, to feel less than significant. There is a wicked, evil, foul plan. The hordes of hell themselves that literally want black men and women, boys and girls in this country and around the world to actually feel like they are less than others. And that, that we will fight. Now, now what we're fighting for, what we know is true in scripture, you're going to have to sink into the, into the whole armor of God. It's, it's going to keep you from hurting yourselves. It's going to keep you from hurting people, those around you. It's going to help you fight right. So sink into the whole armor of God. I love this language. It's so good. It's, an effort, it's not an effort language, is it? There's no effort. How hard is it to sink? You go home and you just sink into your couch. You sink into the pool. You sink into your bed. To sink, you just have to settle down, right? And the sinking happens. Come come on, church. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. This fight is spiritual. So how do we sink? We're fighting the good fight, but to continue to fight with the focus, the understanding, the wisdom that we need, I need the energy and the strength and courage to continue to grow and learn about the history of this country, about the history of this church, about people, and to see this to see these scriptures differently than I ever have before, especially in day two. I need to see these scriptures different than I ever have before. To, con- to continue fighting, honestly, I need to sink. So how do we sink into the armor of God? Five quick steps. Quick, this is going to be super quick, I promise you. It says five simple steps. Now, I want you to know that some of this take is my opinion, but you'll find in Scripture that these concepts that I'm giving you are all throughout. Number one, you find some space. Space. So remember, we're talking about Jesus. We're not fighting with other people. We're trying to figure out how to sink in. Are you edgy? Are you frustrated? Are you running your mouth to people that you love? Are you watching right now and you, and you know that you need to pick up the phone after this sermon? And call that person that you love, but that you've hurt. Ask for forgiveness. Because you were right, but your attitude was so, so wrong. You need to sink. How do we sink? You find some space. You schedule it. You go on a walk. You go on a drive. You go on a hike. You get away by yourself. Why do you think that I golf alone? I, I have a lot of friends that, I can, that love to golf. But this is part of my sinking process. I find some space. Where can you find space? Where, where can you make some space? After this message, I feel some of you may need to make some space. Without your phone, without your calendar, without your computer, without your email. Once you get into the space, number two, you settle in. You take deep breaths. You exhale. You settle in. You get some space. You settle in, and then you get quiet. Number three, space, settle, get quiet. There's no arbitrary time frame, church. I'm just trying to help us 
try to navigate through this I'm on edge feeling. It could be three minutes, it could be three hours, it, whatever you need. What, what I like to do at this point, where I get some space, I settle, I get quiet, silent. I will turn on some music or I'll turn on my Bible app and I'll just hit play and I'll let the Bible read to me or I'll turn on some worship music or some old school 90s music. But I will allow this to happen, this silence. And then the fourth thing is I will seek. I will seek. The seek isn't, isn't me crying out to God all the time. Sometimes it is, church, to be honest. But remember, I'm trying to sink into the provision that God has made for the fight. The fight for human life, the fight for others, those who are, we're not supposed to fight against. we got to seek, sink in. And the ways, many of the ways to do this is the word seek. It's more of a mental focus. Saying, okay, God, fill my mind with verses of Scripture. That's what I do. I just say, God, fill my mind with verses of Scripture. Why? Because if it's His words and not the words of man, that's how I know I'm seeking Him. That's how I know that it's 100% truth. You all know this. We, we can't always get 100% truth from, from man, right? But if God's words are filling my brain as I'm seeking, seeking, I know it's 100% truth. Then in a process of time, before this whole sinking is over, I'll use the power of my words. The last one is I'll speak it. To be honest, that's where this sermon came from. To be honest, that's where most of my sermons came from. I sink. I sink in the provisions God has given me for this fight. The enemy doesn't want me up here each Sunday, church. The enemy doesn't want this live video to go out. The enemy does not want Matt Wyatt as a pastor. The enemy has tried to keep me away from this spot here. And in the past month, honestly, he's given it an amazing shot. But I sink into the fight. Part of the way I fight and I resist injustice, I resist the, the struggles of God, when do we open the church? I resist the emails that are going of not doing enough. I resist that. I sink. I get some space. I breathe. I settle in. I get quiet. I allow my mind to start to start seeking things. Music helps me. Golf helps me. And I start to feel Jesus in that room. And I just start saying things. I say things like, God, I, I, I want to thank you that my fight, my hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings. God, God I thank you that I, I'm going to fight right. God, I thank you that you made provisions for my life. God, I thank you that you knew I'd be a preacher and pastor in 2020 with everything that's going on on this assault on human life, these pandemics, the pan pandemic of COVID-19, the pandemic of racism, the pandemic of abortions. God, you knew I'd be a mouthpiece. God, you knew I'd be a preacher. So I thank you that all the provision I have right now, you have made for me. It's available to me at church. I know it sounds wild, but God has led me to read books written by men and women, women of different color, trying to see their pain, trying to see their plights, trying to see their lives. And then even before I even open a book, or, or read an article, or whatever it is, I sink, and I say, God, speak to me. Show me what you're trying to say to me through the words of this author. Before I respond at all, I have to sink. You need to sink. God has already made provision for the fight. Why are we working so hard? And in working so hard, we're not fighting for human lives. We're fighting human lives. We may be tempted to do a lot of things. But one thing that we will not do at Waitsburg Christian Church, as long as I'm in the, pa I'm the pastor, uh, we're not going to stop. We're going to fight for human life in all aspects. We're going to fight for in, against injustice, COVID-19, abortion, whatever it is. We will not stop. From pregnancy to grave, we will fight the good fight. Church, I love you. I do. I, I love who you are. You are some of the most incredible humans I've ever read about, seen, witnessed, certainly had the privilege to call myself your pastor. I call you family. I call you friends. I love you. God, I'm on edge. He's saying, no problem. 
God's got a provision for you. The peace of God that, that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart, will guard your mind and soul. But we need to sink. You're not alone. Your fight is, is not with people and you are not alone. God is with you and you have a community with you. And we will fight the good fight of faith together. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for just being allowed to be a mouthpiece for you, Lord, just as humbling as that is. But I realize that it's not my title that, that allows me to do that, that all of us can do that, Lord, that all of us can sink so that we can fight the good fight, the correct fight, the right fight. I pray, Lord, I pray, you know my heart, my heart breaks, my heart hurts. I pray that we stop fighting other human lives. Lord, I pray that we realize that the, the enemy, he's a slanderer, he's an accuser. And I pray we don't buy into that, Lord. We know that he doesn't win, but these small little victories that he's having are killing us, are killing our country, are killing our world. We need to stand up, speak the truth in love, fight the good fight. Now, if anyone is watching right now, Lord, and this has touched their heart, and they are not a follower of you, they have not yet accepted this free gift, that today is the day they speak with their, their lips, believe in their heart that you are king, you are God, you will win. Lord, you're 100% that all we have to do is cry out to you and immediately we are transformed, turn from our old life. I pray that someone does that today, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Church, I mean it. I love you. I love every single one of you. Um, it's an honor for Crystal and I to be able to pastor over you. I just pray that we start to fight the good fight. Pray that the slander, the accusations that go out on a daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis, or they see something different about us. We're fighting the good fight. Why? Because we're sinking into you. God bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday.